and a stranglehold on the education of mankind. It has willfully ignored, and in some cases suppressed, the truth regarding many unexplained ancient ruins found all over Earth. The pregnant woman of Baalbek, for example, a megalithic stone many attribute as the largest ever man-moved stone. And although many stones slightly lighter can be found effortlessly placed within ancient structures everywhere. Academia stresses that it couldn't be moved any further. The same can be seen with Yangshan Quarry in China, home to the largest known cut megalith in the world. Again, academia suggests that this stone was abandoned due to its size, completely ignoring the enigmatic notches indicating that the entire shape of these enormous rocks had actually been carved prior to their attempted liberation from the bedrock. They insisted that it was abandoned suddenly, not due to unknown circumstances, but due to them not able to move them. And although the ancient Egyptians, and better known, seagoing Romans themselves, claimed ownership to many of these perplexing structures, and clearly displaying a severe level of erosion, there are some sites coming to light which have seemingly been left to the eons, never again being claimed as another's work. Deep within the southern wildernesses of Siberia lies the mountain of Shoria. Rarely visited by humans, and even less frequently studied, this remote mountain, however, was a few years ago discovered to be the home of something astonishing. Now known as the Gornaya Shoria megaliths, their truly astonishing enormity has made it hard for certain fields of study to even give this place a second glance. And although some of the structure now revealed to the world through photographs clearly shows that these remarkable stone walls have indeed an artificial origin, the few funded individuals who have looked at the site have still somehow had the audacity to claim that it is nothing more than a geological formation. Made with stone bricks many times larger than the stone of the pregnant woman, and with them reaching high up into the heavens far above the tree lines, one has to wonder who could have built this Cyclopean wall? When did they build it? How did they build it? Where did such enormous stones come from? With such enormous structural blocks, it is no surprise that this mind-boggling structure has survived the tests of time. A remarkable location, one which needs serious archaeological explorations in search of remains, so we may one day ascertain the true builders of this amazing place. So the video that you just finished watching is just one of uh, literally thousands of videos on YouTube that document the existence of ruins and of anomalous structures that cannot be explained by any narrative of mainstream academic history that is taught in colleges and universities. Okay, so there has to be another explanation as to where the origin of these ruins and these, you know, structures and these worlds that once existed, how, which history they fit into. So essentially the history that we and therefore we have to look at other sources of information. The history that I teach in these video series is directly from the Bible and also compares with some information that is found, like for example in ruins such as these, in mythological uh, myths and legends and mythologies. And from that we can piece together an alternative history, you may say, that would appear to be the real history. Now, I make no qualms that this history is coming from a biblical perspective. And for some reason, it bothers some people when I say that the Bible is a book of history. Okay, the, the question is not whether the Bible is a book of history or not. The question is whether one believes it is a book of history or not. It begins at the beginning, before the beginning of time, and it takes us into the eternal future. It explains the origins of man. It explains the origins of our mortality and the answer to that mortality. The answers to questions of good and evil, it answers. So any answer that you can seek is that you can seek as to our existence is to be found in it. 
And again, like I, I reiterate that the, the question is not whether the answers or the histories are not there. The issue is whether one believes it or not. So if you don't, if, if, if it bothers you that this is coming from a biblical perspective, then, you know, please don't watch this video. OK, but a lot of people make very derogatory comments, you know, and there's no need for that. Like I said, if you don't believe it, then stop watching. You know, why waste your time? But if you are a real student of history who wants to explore all of the histories that are available to us, then the information that is offered in these videos may indeed be of great value to you, as it has to be to me in explaining my own existence and more importantly, the purpose of that existence.